so the floor is yours. Thank you very much for this introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have a difficult task now, first of all, to keep you from napping and then to present to you many, many interesting facts um, in half an hour. Let's see what I manage. And I will tell you one or the other thing that you may know. Um, but as Armin Peter already said today, we need more knowledge. This is true. But what we especially need is the implementation of the knowledge we have. And here, my technical committee at the DWA has identified many, many gaps. So if only we implemented what we knew, we'd be much further on our way already. So many of you may know the DBWK data sheet from 1996. This was a bestseller. It was translated into many languages, even into Turkish up to 2009. But uh, it is now 18 years old. And uh, things have developed, our knowledge has developed, we have learned a lot from practice, and we saw that there are some deficits here and uh, also some uh, didactical mistakes we made. In our long years of work on the new data sheet, we saw that there were deficits in the presentation um, of uh, fish ways and how to use them in practice, uh, how it is integrated into the flow section. And we also saw that many engineering officers like um, so-called turnkey solutions. Uh, this is a pity that they don't want to think on their own, but uh, it can also be good uh, so we know what we have delivered, namely solutions for fish uh, to migrate. And what was also mentioned already, it's not only the weir structures on a river, but uh, also other things like uh, culverts, uh, fikes, and so on. Uh, these are all barriers, and for this we also need to find solutions, even though they may be very individual. And one more thing. I do I want to mention here in the old data sheet we differentiated between technical and nature like uh, in the classification of fishways in Germany, in some federal states, the result of this was that uh, only nature-like uh, solutions were chosen because they were more expensive, they looked nicer, uh, and people liked it more. But this was not the right solution because we forgot that a fishway should work, that this is the uh, utmost priority independent of its design. And this is why we no longer follow this approach. So many of you uh, were already waiting for the yellow paper, which was published in February 2010. And uh, we uh, chose uh, this procedure of a green or yellow book here. Um, and this included 1,400 points, including comments. But no fundamental criticism was voiced regarding the philosophy we chose. Uh, unlike at the workshops, there was, for instance, one workshop in Berlin where uh, people discussed with us, made good comments, gave fit feedback, uh, told us about typos. Of course, this always happens. And we looked at all 1,400 points of feedback. This took us two years. And in the end, uh, we could publish it in May 2014. Uh, then the final version 
was published and many of you will know it already. It's quite complex, but the topic we are talking about today is a complex topic and therefore needs to be represented in a complex way. So basically what I already said, uh, this differentiation between nature-like and technical, uh, this no longer holds true. What we want is functionality, possibility. We want that the fish find the fish ways. So the best structure doesn't work if the fish doesn't find the entry. So uh, here it's important to have a guidance flow and we still don't know everything and we still don't have uh, the perfect standard solutions for all cases. Of course, we always want to standardize, but the question is, does that really work? Aren't we going in the wrong direction? If we want to standardize things, shouldn't we rather try to understand and the principles and the system behind it and then find uh, adequate solutions. Once the fish has found the entry, it needs to pass. Uh, we heard it in the Black Ramps presentation today uh, that people build good fishways, have a good entrance, well positioned, but the fish fail to pass. In some cases because they are not well maintained. So this means that we do not only need a good design, but the structure also needs to comply with the necessary operational requirements. And then the philosophy generally is that uh, an operating time of 300 days should be guaranteed except for some very low water and very uh, high water times. There may be differences in the alpine regions, but we heard from Mr. Hofgarten today that even at very low temperatures, uh, the uh, fish continue to migrate in winter at the sea or close to the sea. But uh, uh, it would be right to ask the question whether in the alpine regions this also holds true. But for this, we need further data and findings. And the decisive point is the, these are no fixed truths. These are conditions, it's a framework, it is what we should aim at, but it is not a solution for all situations that may occur. Then now, how do p uh, the fish find the fish facilities? Uh, I have brought you one example here of a very wide river, and this is a negative example. You have a small power station there with and a lock. It looks great and uh, maybe it's also good for the fish because the water levels, the heights are uh, not too different but uh, the distance to the uh, main outflow is just too big and the fish won't find it. Many people will know the philosophy that you should go very close to the actual point where fish take the flow as orientation when they come to the actual impoundment. So uh, when we have a power station that you have a guidance flow to lead the fish into uh, the fishway, but we often have a fixed way and uh, if they are inclined, uh, then uh, this is probably where fish will uh, all gather together. And if you have such guidance flow, then you can take the fish from there or uh, you make it easier. So uh, dotation is a, another point. Uh, where do we find or do the fish find uh, and places they need to find. So density is negligible here, very, very low. The speed, velocity, there are certain uh, limits here. 
so that uh, the parameter you can work with, or the only parameter you can really work with, is the volume of the water. And uh, this is what you often discuss with operators, because um, water volume is very dear to them, of course, because it can cost a lot of money. And there you need to discuss uh, how can we manage with less water? Can we achieve the same result with less water? What solutions are possible? Many people of you may know the Francois Bernier uh, approach with this 1 to 5% of the competing outflow, but indirectly proportionate. Uh, if you have smaller outflows, uh, then um, you can um, apply this to uh, get a result. But this is only for your orientation. You should not stick too much to these values. Uh, now, possibility. Possibility in a ramp, in a fishway. Uh, he use, in this picture, he uses a wooden fish here uh, to demonstrate the fish has to be able to pass. And it doesn't help if we have a lot of water distributed there over uh, the broad river. No, we need to have the right design, the right design for the right water way. And uh, sometimes it can happen that uh, the math tell you that there is enough water, but if you have these small openings, fish will nevertheless have problems passing there. So the gastric example presented before, uh, we do need these sites for the sturgeon, but in inland waterways, um, smaller solutions are absolutely feasible too. So we need enough water upstream and downstream, but it shouldn't be too much because then we have turbulences. And mm, many of you, if you walk along a waterway, you can say, uh, or you can name examples for the different uh, points here, which again tells us you need to apply what you know. And in the new data sheet, we increasingly focused on the new philosophy using rated values and thresholds. We all know that there are certain thresholds uh, regarding fish. Uh, from uh, geometry, where do fish pass? What geometries do they pass? Then their relations to the fish uh, sizes, and you can derive good solutions if you have a slot and look at it. And uh, that um, you say the S minimum is three times the D fish, for instance. But we also have thresholds that are based on a fish's ability to swim. You all know the difference between sprint uh, capabilities and uh, permanent swimming capabilities. And then you have the different species of fish. If you have a basin, like a pool, like fish weight, then you have these peaks and in between a very uh, slow velocity. If uh, we have a sturgeon pass, we have uh, much lower peaks but higher velocities in between. So uh, the fish still needs to swim at somehow higher speed and uh, this uh, red line there. This is something between permanent swimming and increased uh, swimming velocity. So we can only ask the fish to swim as fast as he can and to perform uh, or to show the performance he is able to show 
And uh, this table from our data sheet shows a classification of fish waste. There are many, many different designs, also very special designs, some of them more successful than others. Uh, this also depends on the people who developed it and who promote these solutions. I will only uh, talk about a few of them. This will be challenge enough. So uh, looking at the pool like passes, you usually always have a kind of channel and we usually uh, reduce uh, differences in height through narrow spaces and the basic principle here is that the maximum space Speed depends on the overall uh, difference in height uh, because uh, this uh, also has an effect on the uh, fish's ability to swim. The philosophy has changed uh, a little here in the past. We had more higher pools. Now we say we don't recommend that because experience shows us that uh, high pools attract a lot of predators and they just wait uh, there and prey on the fish coming on. And their hydraulics often also don't make sense because they have a rather turbulent area in a normal pool. And then you come with a pool that is three or four times that big, which means that velocity will decrease and the uh, floating matter in the water will sediment. You will uh, quickly have uh, a lot of mud, a mud desert in your pool, and you cannot get rid of that with natu by natural means. And this only leads to new problems. However, our philosophy now is the higher the difference in height, the lower the velocity in the narrow uh, sections must be. Here you see the example of a slot pass, double slot pass. So uh, the h difference in height between the different pools needs to be reduced so that we rather focus on the fish's permanent swimming capability. So um, I think 10 meters here will no longer be a solution in the future. Looking at the hydraulic principle shows us three or four different uh, types that are possible, sometimes a hole on the, uh, on the bed, sometimes vertical slot or some mix of overflow and slot or just an overflow. Whether you use concrete for that or whether you need natural stones for that doesn't matter. The hydraulic principle remains the same. One thing here is important, and this is often forgotten in discussion, namely that uh, if you have slots on the top, uh, you usually do not have the maximum velocity on the top, but somewhere lower uh, in the range between delta H and 2 delta H. The question is always, uh, where do I measure velocity? And this is a question that is important if one day I make a performance review uh, focusing not only on how do fish accept the fish way but also is it built the way I wanted it to be built so measure the distances, measure velocities to see what it meets the requirements. And the decisive point here that is new now in our new concept is that we introduced um, safety factors and some of you may know that uh, from uh, civil engineering for instance so uh, we use thresholds now and uh, rated values to derive uh, safety values uh, for different points of the fishway. So we have um, hydraulic uh, 
points that are not uh, quite uh, clear uh, hydraulic fussinesses in the uh, fishways. This must be taken into account. And how often is a fishway cleaned? Must be taken into account how well is it maintained. If you're not able to uh, clean it, then you must expect if there are leaves and if there are tree branches and so on, and somehow it's all stuck, then maybe it's the wrong design if you can't get there to clean it. Maybe then you should uh, choose a different design. So we have uh, different um, designs uh, which all have their different geometries and these three examples here show you the differences with a slot part, double slot pass and the denil generally you have clear structures so up to the centimeter or the millimeter you can measure them if you uh, have such channel with natural elements uh, you just will never have identical stones and then you will have different flow profiles and turbulences that need to be taken into account and uh, this leads to the three basic principles for calculation taking for instance the uh, threshold velocities and multiply them with the uh, safety values and the, thus reduce the actual rated value so that you create the necessary safety, so to speak. So what does that mean? This example can make this clearer. If you design uh, such a uh, pass, have uh, enough space, it looks great, and if I build it, uh, in nature, no stone will look like the other, will have just the same size. And even if you have uh, good construction workers who do a good job, if you measure it afterwards, you will find that you have different values between the different steps. And uh, it will happen that you reach a threshold value there. But if we take it seriously, we must not exceed these thresholds. However, our philosophy says, well, OK, we can reach this threshold because the fish can still pass there. And what we must not forget is that we have different operating states. Uh, it's never this uh, level of water, there can be lower levels of water, there can be flooding, and it is clear that uh, these steps can not always be passed, but uh, it should be clear that uh, the fishway should be stable enough so that we do not have to build a new one after every flood. And um, if we have pool-like fishways, we are rather flexible. We uh, can choose different pathways. What we need to avoid are hydraulic uh, short circuits, so to speak. And uh, there is a recommendation in our data sheet on how to align and arrange the different elements. Looking at the uh, basic principles, you see the difference in height between the different pools. This is the limiting factor. We need to start with the highest uh, water level, uh, difference in water level. And uh, many problems occur with the connection to the um, underwater uh, bed and in many countries uh, people say oh fish ladder fish way fish ladder and they just build a real ladder this wouldn't be no problem for us as human beings but not for fish because the fish takes the water as a point of orientation not the ground so that you have fishways like this which may be functional inside but if you don't get in uh, it won't work so uh, it would be a two meter jump and this would be difficult for any fish. 
A different point that people often forget is a certain depth of water, and in many cases, this depth is significantly higher than uh, the water depth in the actual waterway. So, if you have a broader waterway, then you have a sm uh, smaller uh, outflow, uh, and then the water level will be lower. So, and many people can't imagine that, but it is necessary, really, to take that into account. So you see it in the right example, how you can use stones uh, to fix that, and you won't see that afterwards. Then, um, looking at all the different uh, types here, I can't go into detail because we don't have time for that. The best known examples are the conventional pool passes with a slot. they clear hydraulic conditions. Uh, what is important is that uh, it does not have a free overflow to force fish to to jump. This is an established technology, but it doesn't work if I have too much solid matter uh, so that the uh, slots are not enough. Uh, but it's a very solid uh, design for most cases. And another very popular pass is the vertical slot pass. You have different uh, kinds and varieties of that. The slot size can differ here, and there are discussions on what should the flow look like in the pool. Is there an energy reduction? Do you have do we have turbulences in there, um, or is it almost the same level everywhere? We from the technical committee discussed that over a long time, looked at international literature and then um, concluded that there will be um, uh, some um, dissipating. This, this will play a role. So you can read up on that if you want. Now two or three special things. The um, Meandering fish pass um, was reintroduced in Germany a few years ago. Uh, this Mr. Jens, who invented this, tried that out with tins in his own garden. It's a good idea, but looking at how it is dimensioned these days, it can't work. Because this was a numerical simulation and this shows us that we have extremely high velocities. And if we then look at the requirements uh, of a fish pass for fish, we find that we would have to increase these facilities uh, by uh, twofold. And then this cost uh, advantage is no longer there. So you can read up on that later. I don't have time to that uh, to talk about uh, that now. The pool pass with roughness elements and brush uh, furnished fishways. Uh, there are other people here in the audience who know more about that than I do. But what is important is that we have interdisciplinary understanding. Not just an engineer or just a biologist. No, you should work together because then it will work. But it only works if people really communicate with each other and speak the same language. And this was also important to us that we have uh, biological elements and technical elements in our data sheet and we clearly recommend everyone to read both sections. So what nature has to offer us is everything from fish, hydrology, uh, morphology, uh, then 
what restrictions exist regarding the water, what is in the water, sediments, uh, floating matter, and so on. This all needs to be taken in get, uh, into account. And uh, basic findings means that there are standard solutions, but there is not the solution. There are different conditions, a river, a house, uh, not enough space available. All these things can play a role and can affect the uh, design of your fishway. The advantage of these standard fishways is that uh, we have experience with it and uh, we can be quite sure, uh, sure it does work, but and this may be hard for engineers. Uh, think of uh, think like a fish if you design a fish way. So do not only think the technical way, but think like a fish. And what is important for operation, and this is also reflected in our uh, dimensioning um, calculation. So nature means hazards, nature means uh, unexpected things, and there, as an engineer, you need to be courageous enough, build something, and then if, if it doesn't work, or if you require improvements, then say, okay, we need to adjust it. This was not correctly dimensioned, and here I call upon everyone. It should not happen that you say, oh, my colleague there, he did it wrong. Rather, you should try to help each other and then find a good solution for the fish, find the right dimensioning. Because a bad fish way is worse than a fish way that was not built because this money could have been used for other purposes. And um, we also focus on quality assurance from the beginning, not just a little during planning, but also during construction and during the commissioning and afterwards. And regarding operations, I would like to say these pictures may be provocative. I brought these pictures from Turkey. And uh, this is uh, one of the few fishways that work well in this region, but I think that none of you would like to climb these uh, fishways uh, and uh, to take a closer look at that. So uh, not just uh, here in our countries, but everywhere, you should make sure that it is they are easily accessible, that um, they are safe, in winter, they can be iced over, uh, so it should be clear that uh, safety precautions are taken, but often not enough this is not the case, because accessibility plays a role for maintenance. And then uh, you may say, okay, if I don't get there, I fly there, <laughs> but, well, who does that? So. If you can't access it, then you cannot clean it, you can't maintain it, uh, because uh, it takes months to build it, but it will be operated for 30 or 40 years. And that was it. Thank you very much for your attention.